Okay. All right. Well, it's, it's a little early, but I'll go ahead and uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, would you call the roll, Ron? Yes, sir. Ms. Janie Rhodes? Here. Mr. Stephen Greenwood? Here. Mr. John Breeden? Here. Ms. Bonnie Height? Here. Mr. Don Wagner? Here. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the review and adoption of the meeting agenda. As, uh, do I hear a motion to adopt that? I make a motion to adopt them. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any comments? If not, uh, would you call, um, would you poll the commission? Uh, Ms. Janey Rhodes? Aye. Mr. Stephen Greenwood? Aye. Mr. John Breeden? Aye. Ms. Bonnie Height? Aye. Mr. John Wagner? Aye. Next thing on the agenda is the review and approval of the minutes. Uh, before we ask, call for a motion, uh, has anybody got any comments? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we'll have to change the, uh, it seems we had a left over at the end. Uh, the chairman is Mr. Don Wagner, not Mr. Don Breeden. So we will have okay. To and, also, um, and also, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I think you're going to say the same thing I had. You have Miss Janie Rhodes down oh. twice. <laughs> yep, and the, you weren't listed. Right, so I, but I think you all may have already made that question according to a note, notation I have here. Um, any other comments? Okay, if not, um, I will ask for a motion to approve the minutes. Do I hear a motion to approve? No. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Um, all in favor? Say aye. 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 I think that got everybody. All right. Um, let's see. I lost my place. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the public comment period. Uh, Mr. Etter, would you uh, read any comments you may have had or if you have not? Uh, so. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, no one emailed or called in comments for this public hearing. Um, so there's nothing to read into the record. Uh, I will let you know that we have no participants unless Kelly decides she wants to make a public comment here at this uh, particular meeting, which I'm pretty sure she doesn't. So it does not look like we would have anyone commenting at this time. Okay. Okay. We may have some questions for her as we go through. Um, in that case, then I will close the public comment period. All right. Next item. Uh, and this looks like the big item for the evening, is the discussion and review of the draft ordinance. What I would like to do, I want to make sure uh, we want to go ahead and try and get this draft ordinance completed as quickly as possible, and hopefully we can do that tonight. But I want to make sure we've got uh, everybody's comments and everybody is comfortable with what we um, have. Uh, so I would ask if you, if any of you have any concerns, make sure you're heard, um, make sure your comments are listed, and we will try and get a, at least a nod of approval on any changes or whatever that we may have. Um, what I would like to do is go ahead and start this with John Breeden's comments. Um, have you all gotten... 
gotten uh, Mr. Breeden's comments and have you read through them? Yes. Okay. John, do you want to go ahead and present those? Uh, most of them are editorial, and I would be fine with staff addressing them. Uh, if you all are comfortable, that would be fine with me as well. The first uh, comment of substance is the subdivision minor. When, it, when the, that was stricken from the draft ordinance and we had the replacement, I had not had a chance to review anything. And so um, I, I, I have some concerns about having a major subdivision and not having a minor subdivision. And the farmstead, while it might be a wonderful thing, I didn't come across any instances in Virginia that had a, uh, a, a section in their ordinance for farmsteads. And as a replacement for minor subdivisions, I had a great deal of concern. That was probably the biggest one, though I've got a few others as well. So um, where do we stand? Is, are we, is minor subdivision out, or do we want to consider putting it back in? Okay, just uh, since this is something I put in, um, we haven't eliminated minor subdivision. The, the farmstead subdivision is a minor subdivision. Uh, it has the same basic purposes. There's just some changes in the um, language because to, in other words, for instance, um, we have put in there that uh, what I've asked is the we have a setback on the existing primary and secondary roads of 500 feet, and the reason for this is to restore the not restore, but at least uh, help the uh, the view shed in the rural areas of the county. Uh, I know you all have all heard me say this a hundred times, but um, the proliferation of minor subdivisions in this county has wreaked habit on, on the view shed of the rural areas. And as I was talking to you today about um, the road that Janie and I live on, you get past my subdivision. My subdivision is an exempt subdivision, 25 acres. There's only one house in the subdivision that um, is less than 500 feet from the road. There are only two other houses besides that out of eight houses in the subdivision that, um, that can be seen from the road. Then you've got... Uh, Donald Moran's house, uh, which is an old farmhouse that's close to the road, but it's a, uh, actually it's a historic home. And then you've got Janie's home, which is certainly historic, but hadn't been designated that. You've got Bob Hubbard's house. You've got the Crow's property. And it gives a – and by the way, the subdivision adjacent to and across the road from Janie's house is a subdivision that was planted in the 1990s and the 10 acre lots and every house except the last two in that subdivision were back uh, well off the road where they couldn't be seen. So that's what we want to restore is something like that. But also one of the uh, uses that can be made of, this, of these subdivisions and the reason we came up with the term, um, what is it? Um, it's a, Farmstead. <laughs> Minor farmstead subdivision um, is to give the opportunity for the EDA or the planning commission to work with uh, people that want to move into such a subdivision or that already live in such a subdivision to be able to uh, develop small businesses, small farm-based businesses, greenhouses, orchards, uh, fruit crops, and so forth that um, will help to contribute to the feel of the rural area of the county rather than taking away as our minor subdivisions have. Um, I'm, I'm certainly open to any other comments or recommendations on that, but just wanted to give you a little idea why, we, why this was developed and what the purpose. But again, it is still a minor subdivision. We haven't taken away minor subdivisions or we will not have taken away minor subdivisions. 
Okay, go ahead, John. Or anybody else? So, so, so my basic would, question. Oh, go ahead. I would, I would say that this actually does take away the minor subdivision because this really is geared towards your AC district. Um, so there may be other districts though that would like to do minor subdivisions and this really changes that. Um, another thing we would say is I think in our professional opinion, we would agree with keeping the minor subdivision in and I think your farmstead could be accomplished through some of the things in your notes that I received today about changing in the zoning ordinance, the lot size, the setbacks. If you want those types of things in your agricultural district, you can achieve that by making that your minimum requirement, making that minimum lot size 15 acres, making your setback greater in the ag district if that's something that you're interested in. Well, that's certainly what I'm interested in, but I'd also be interested in hearing what the rest of the Planning Commission members have to say about it. Um, you know, uh, it, the intent was not just because we, just because I put the monitor farmstead on there was just to distinguish it uh, um, as, as an improvement to the rural areas of the county. Um, and that's why I, I had asked that, that the intent be changed or did the intent be changed back to what I had originally had. Any other comments? I'll just, no, well, this I is will. Janie. Um, yeah, Janie, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, we're, I've got poor connection, so I hope y'all can hear. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I understand um, Mr. Breeden's concerns, um, but I also understand the underlying intent as explained by Chairman Wagner. And so I guess my question is, I too am concerned about proliferation of the minor subdivisions utilized in a manner that's not thoughtful. And I don't think that that just pertains to agricultural. And so my question is, as uh, Chairman Wagner pointed out, is how else would we address what seems to be a legitimate concern of our commissioners? If it's not through this, what are other ways we could do that? whatever the district is. Anyone else have any comment on that? Jump in there, Rebecca. <laughs> Kelly and I are looking like, are you speaking? Am I speaking? Um, so I, I guess first I want to understand um, you feel like there's in, in your business areas in your residential zone districts, those districts are also seeing, you know, a lot of subdividing? They, no, they're not. Let, let me get no. that straight. And John, you can, John, you can jump in too. Um, you've been here a lot longer than I have, although I've been to most of the meetings you have been. Mm -hmm. But, um, the R1 and RR district have specific uses. The RR district is for the major subdivisions. The R1 district is major subdivisions. Uh, I, I, I don't, I can't think right off the top of my head whether the uh, uh, the um, minor subdivisions are allowed in the R1 or RR districts. But I, when when someone comes in and ask to develop a subdivision for an R1, I mean, yeah, an R, RR district, rural residential district. That subdivision includes that, uh, is what that entire district is. There is nothing, no room left, or should be no room left in that. The same thing for major subdivisions in the 
in either district. There, there should be no room left for a minor subdivision. And I don't know whether we have minor subdivisions in in our our in our one districts or not. But I'm not aware of any. I think, to the best of my knowledge, all minor subdivisions are in the AC districts. So I'll just jump in, if if, if you will, Mr. Chairman, um, and to reiterate some of the discussion that was in that we had at the last meeting when we did discuss subdivisions and yeah. the difference between use and subdivision. And so the zoning ordinance is looking at residential uses and then the subdivision ordinance is demonstrating or articulating how that use is applied to the land and particularly through the division of land. And so we have to be careful when we talk about subdivisions versus residential uses. So a person can divide their properties based on the lot sizes in the zoning ordinance um, for a residential use. And then they have to abide by the requirements of the subdivision ordinance. Um, and so we need to just, I just want to, again reiterate the difference between use and subdivision and that subdivision can be more than just for a residential use and i think that that's how um some of the comments where we're talking about subdivisions are primarily focused on residential but that subdivisions can be more than that well uh, I've been go, ahead. Ahead. I, I, go ahead mr uh well, Ms. Cameron, let me just in for a minute for kelly and rebecca the issue really is only the AC district. Minor subdivisions are allowed in the AC districts, residential housing, the way it's set up, definitions and everything. The problem is over the years, the minor subdivisions, the four lots or less, which are by right in the AC, um, all the major subdivisions, the rural residential R1, all that, that's for, ma that's for anything over four lots. You have to get it rezoned in the AC to that. So the whole issue with the minor subdivisions is, on is only about the AC district and how we can stop so many, because what's happened in the past, it was supposed to be limited to four, how, you know, four houses can be built in a minor. And due to um, interpretations and ignoring certain parts of the ordinance, some of these little minor subdivisions, which didn't have to meet any of the performance of the major subdivision, residential subdivision, they would end up being seven, eight, 14 houses. So they should have been a major subdivision with all the rules and standards, but they weren't. So lack of enforcement and abuse of the system resulted in a number of minor subdivisions that should have been major subdivisions with lots of entrances on 30 and 360. So the intent, and Mr. Wagner, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong when I start talking about your intent, but um, your, Mr. Wagner's intent and most of the commission is to stop these uh, these developments that don't have to meet all the standards of a major subdivision that are eating up large tracts of land that they're not supposed to be doing. Um, my, one of my recommendations, you know, we've talked about, my big thing is the way the ordinance is set up for miners now, I think if it's enforced properly, it takes care of a lot of the problems. Uh, a lot of people have said go to 10 acre minimum lot size. Uh, Mr. Wagner's uh, proposal with the 15-acre uh, lot sizes and requiring VDOT roads and all that. I mean, these are why all these options are on the table. So it's not for Rebecca. It's not a matter of what you could do in your business zone. That's really not what the whole intent of this is. Kelly's saying with you, it's not the subdivision land. It is the minor subdivision of being more than four houses. And how we can I like think said, also, and I, 
I appreciate the clarification um, and it's helpful because those distinctions are important. But I think also the thing about the minor subdivisions is there, there is a, the review process is administrative and the approval process is, um, um, and I'm guessing the requirements are much less stringent. And so my question is, if we were to retain the minor subdivisions, could we build in the requirements that we want to see as a minimum, for instance, buffers, et cetera, if it's not going to be a review by the Planning Commission to address our concerns, in addition to the um, increased enforcement? Well, that's what Rebecca and Kelly both were saying before. We can address all of that through our subdivision ordinance and their uh, performance standards. Yes, Speaking so you, okay. you can build in the okay. performance standards into your minor subdivision. It would not be, it would not incorporate proffers because you can only have those during the rezoning process. Right, right. And the whole point in minors is not to go through a rezoning process. Uh, you know, that's one of the perks and the abuse of it was, Oh, we'll just instead of going through all this, we'll keep we'll call it a minor and but make it it should have been a major. Well, a major doesn't necessarily require subdivision. I mean, a uh, rezoning though. It's just you have yes, to get does. the requisite approvals, yes. correct? Okay. Oh, it almost it, it always requires, requires a rezoning. <laughs> okay, because you're taking something like AC. Okay, uh, I see. You should generally, not be requiring generally. rezoning for anything that is meeting the minimum requirements of your zoning ordinance. So 99% yeah, of the county is zoned AC. So any place you want to put a major subdivision has to be rezoned right. because it's AC. Right. 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 So practice in practice, everything that the and, couple and that I have. Yeah. Sorry, and, and that's John, where we get. Uh, uh, John Breeden, if I may. Uh, so uh, I, I, th there's a citizen survey done now 10 years ago, and everyone said they wanted to keep the rural areas rural. And Mr. Wagner and, and, and Ms. Rhodes uh, are reflecting that, and, and I do as well. We want to keep the rural areas as rural as, as possible. But I like uh, Ms. Rhodes' comment about can we uh, uh, beef up the minor subdivision ordinance in such a way that that we retain that rural character right and that's what i think mr wagner's proposal for the um, farmstead those are the the criteria the performance standards that we would put for a minor subdivision yeah and and you know if if we were to retain the minor subdivisions even if we beef them up like was previously uh recommended in other words only one entrance of that minor subdivision onto the existing secondary road. They would have to build internal roads and be uh, put in feed out system. Um, and they would have to be paved and, and uh, built, to, built to feed out standards. Um, if we had something like that, that would help. But the other issue that I have, and I've reflected that before, is the proliferation. How do we stop that? Um, you know, requiring the roads to be put in the state system and paved is one way that will stem the tide of those somewhat, but probably not enough. Um, it's, it's still an attractive subdivision for some people to, to come out here into the country on a five-acre lot. Um, and, and for the for the buyers, a five-acre lot with paved roads may be even better. But at the same time, uh, I'm not sure that, well, I'll put it bluntly, but I'm not sure that the profit uh, would be enough for a developer to go that far um, as, as they do now. But at the same time, um, the, the, there's still the possibility of that continued proliferation and that continues eating up the road front of the road frontage throughout the rural areas. Um, we've suffered that a lot up in this end of the county, not so much in the lower end of the county, but 
uh, I have heard from so many people that they would like to see something done about that. And the the um, farmstead subdivision is a way and the reason that we were pushing that forward is to give it a dual purpose. Uh, if people want to come out here and develop a small farm on 15 acres, 20 acres, um, they could do that. And it would still be a decent subdivision. And it would probably introduce a... Uh, uh, possibly to introduce better housing in some in some areas, some instances. But um, I, you know, I'm I'm open to anything else. Uh, but this proposal is the one that, it, at least I felt like, uh, accomplished what what I would like to see in the rural areas. I'm not speaking for the whole commission. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, I'm at this point. I think it's. Uh, would be a good idea um, to have this in the draft ordinance. That way it will help generate public participation and we can really get a feel for where the county wants to go. So I don't see any problem with think, going with this as part of the draft. Rebecca, would you um, op opine for me on that? <laughs> you know, we're here to, to, to go with what you want to go with. Um, I, I would give you this thought to consider, which is as written right now, even though this is, you know, farmstead and, and you're trying to focus on the ag district, um, because minor subdivision has been taken out, when you have business zoned property, that someone you know might have a large parcel and they decide okay i want to divide this up into three parcels they wouldn't okay. be able to do that essentially with with the way this is written yeah. without just minor subdivisions included without going through all the requirements of a major subdivision they would either have to go through major subdivision or they would have to do two to seven lots that are 15 acres. Yeah, right. Rebecca, Rebecca this is Don again. The, um, on the exempt subdivisions, there is a provision in the exempt subdivisions that they uh, cannot subdivide the lots. Um, it's been allowed in some cases, but it's not supposed to be allowed according to the code. Um, I think we could put that that in there, and, and I, I like Ron's idea to uh, go ahead and put this in the draft ordinance and, and get feedback from the, from the community and uh, from all those involved in the community. Uh, that way we can, if, if this doesn't uh, seem to suit, the, you know, I'm, I'm not saying majority of people, uh, we don't necessarily look things that, as numbers of how many people vote for and how many people vote against, but what is best for the community, and that's what I would hope we could find out through the public hearing process. And Rebecca, if I may, Mr. Wagner. Um, yes. On the, um, for the commercial side of things, without that minor subdivision capability, um, like I said, almost everything would have to either be already zoned commercial, so that subdivision doesn't apply to the commercial district, or they would have to get a rezoning anyway to do whatever commercial they wanted to do there. So I'm not really sure it would impact um, anything outside the agricultural zone. But if, if it's already zoned commercial, if it's already zoned commercial and they want to split it up, they still have to go through the major subdivision requirements. That's yes. Correct. How many other Rebecca. counties have got minor subdivisions? What was that, uh, Stephen? How many other counties have gotten rid of minor subdivisions in their ordinances altogether? If you said there's no, none of them have gotten this farmstead, I mean, how many other ones have already gotten rid of minors as well? Generally, we see localities going the other way. If they don't have it, they're adding it to try to um, streamline processes. That's what I was thinking. Maybe we should put it back in, but put the extra stringent 
ordinances in there and, and add the farmstead also to allow the farmsteads on an agricultural land, but still put back in a more stringent uh, minor plan just so we have it. Like you said, it's for, it's not for residential, it's for just a subdivision in general. But I don't know what the rest of the uh, board wants. Well, uh, I, I like that idea. Yeah. You like the idea of having a dual ordinance? Yes. Again, my 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 concern with that is remains to be the proliferation. Um, um, I can't speak for developers, but uh, it seems to me if a developer has got a um, got an option between a minor subdivision and a farmstead subdivision, he's going to go with a minor subdivision uh, because. Uh, well, I'm not sure why. <laughs> but, uh, it, well, he it, would probably he probably would. be easier yeah. to develop. Yeah, who was that? Go ahead. That was Janie. No, I said. Yeah, I said that they they would go with the minor because the lot sizes are small. No, so the, the lot sizes are regulated by the zoning ordinance. So whatever the zoning district that they're going to, the, the subdivision isn't ordinance isn't changing the base zoning district lot size requirements. Um, so if far someone takes, no, that's so for uh, that's helpful. So if you've got a, um, a parcel of AC land, agricultural land, and someone wants to do a minor subdivision on it, and uh, they go through the regular administrative process and approvals with the more stringent requirements, they can't have lot sizes less than 10 acres. Correct. Well, currently five acres. Right, five acres it, on the presuming that they can do the 10 acres. Right. Yes. And that's, that's the only. So, and so if you have a hunt. Okay. I see. So I will be honest that it, when Rebecca and I look at this farm set stead subdivision, um, I, I think it's admirable. Um, we are certainly supportive of preservation of agriculture and prime ag land. I think if someone wants to do a residential development, um, they, they may not, this, they may not truly be incentivized to do this, um, because it will mean less yield. And so they will be kind of, your developer is going to be looking at what's the advantage going through a public hearing process and getting additional lot yield or upping the lot size and going through this minor Kind of minor subdivision farmstead subdivision process so that'll be something for them to balance um, because the underlying zoning is still then going to be there on the property and they will be able to develop that by right they'll just have to go through that minor subdivision process or major subdivision uh, process uh, 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 John, John Breeden here. So uh, I've, I've, I've not looked extensively at the farmstead draft we have, but, it, but I don't know if we require stringent roads. Maybe with a minor subdivision, you have to have the VDOT roads and you have to have that road go into the four lots and so forth and so on. And with the farmstead keeping it more rural, uh, then, then may, maybe there would not be the stringent requirements. And, and again, the concept being the farmstead keeps the rural look and feel and you may not have as much infrastructure to build as a developer, which might make that more attractive than a minor subdivision with heat out roads and so forth and so on. That's an option. That's true. That's true. You've got to have an incentive. That's true. Um, well, well uh, Rebecca and Kelly, if I may, uh, does this give you all enough information to do a little bit of wordsmithing for us? I think we need clarification on if you want minor subdivision added back and if you 
kind of as Mr. You know, are we taking Mr. Breeden's recommendation to add it back with similar requirements to the farmstead subdivision? I'd go for that. Or are we I'm sorry. I said I would uh, go for that. I don't know what everybody else wants. I mean, I, do you want to want to take a straw poll? <laughs> When we, if, if we're talking about going to the minor subdivision where we would have five acre lots, we would require an internal street system to, uh, to be put into the VDOT system. Um, I, don't, I don't like the idea of, of putting it in and having it maintained by, by a, a homeowners association uh, with four, lo four lots. That's not going to be done very well or not probably not be done at all but require that the streets the internal streets um, be taken into the VDOT system built to VDOT standards and taken into the VDOT system that uh, we would continue with the um, no flag lots um, that we would only have one entrance onto the state road uh, you know, if we have all those provisions in there, then I would have no problem with that. As for the farmstead subdivision, if we wanted to go with that, the requirement that I would want to see in there would be that uh, the internal streets have a 50-foot right-of-way uh, or whatever VDOT required. That may only be a 40-foot right-of-way, but probably a 50-foot would work better. Um, and that we have some provision, uh, required provision for maintenance of that if we want to leave it as a uh, gravel road, unpaved road, or whatever. Um, but if it's built to beat up standards initially and not paved, then if you've got seven lots in there, those seven, lot, seven owners may want to go to beat out and petition uh, they would have to bring the streets up to standard and petition VDOT to take them in. That could be done. I think a lot of our citizens would like to have both of those options, and I, I fully support what Mr. Wagner just suggested. I agree. I agree. I do too. Okay. So we got that. That'll John. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you all so much. I appreciate it. What's your, um, what do you have next, John? Uh, the, one of the few remaining substantial things I have is uh, 86116.2. We have the, uh, the uh, uh, TCO covering all of, of Route 30. Uh, and I thought we decided to keep it within a certain mileage of Central Garage and outside of West Point. Um, it, 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 uh, what was the what, what have we agreed upon? Because I don't really remember. Apparently, okay. If, if I may, um, we talked about that. Uh, uh, Mr. Hedder and I had talked about leaving it at uh, at just four miles each direction or something approximately four miles in each direction on Route 30. I think Ms. Tesson Harry spoke up uh, and indicated she would like to see it the whole distance. Um, I think this is a decision that need, needs to be made by the Planning Commission. Um, I personally prefer limiting it to four miles in each direction or something close to that, uh, similar to what we had done in the last TCO upgrade. Um, I don't see any point having that go all the way through the AC districts from to the Caroline County line and to the West Point. And, and it would put us in position of of looking at at what is being done for every house, all the way from one end to the other. If we keep it from one end to the other, and again, I've got mixed feelings. I could go either way. Just it is a it's something we need to consider as a commission. And that's a recommendation you can make to the Board of Supervisors. And there are businesses so all around the town, too. I mean, not a lot. There, yeah, there are a few. A couple mm -hmm. of stores, a couple of rural stores and things like that. But um, 
uh, you know, when we get into the comp plan, I think there's some things we need to look at uh, in terms of perhaps having some additional business districts, um, such as, in my opinion, around the courthouse and maybe closer to West Point. If I may, um, Chairman Wagner, um, uh, why don't we just go ahead and um, we can change, you know, make the modification to the TCO to do the four miles out either direction, and then when we take it to the Board of Supervisors, you know, when you all recommend it to the Board, it can be up to them if they want to go ahead and send it down to third, you know, all the way down. Yeah, they're the yeah, legislative I'm group. And, and that's one that's one in particular I would specifically specifically point out to them that our recommendation was four miles they might want to consider the entire length. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and the, I mean, yeah, that I think either way that works fine for everybody. And I'm asking that question. <laughs> Does that work fine for everybody? I don't Steven, like that. No, I don't like that. You don't like it's that? Four miles four miles is too short. If, if the whole length is too much, I think we need to do more because, like I said, there's an auto body shop that's past four miles already, and there's a, a few things that are all past. I think it should be more than four, but maybe look at where all most of the businesses are, how far they extend. I know that's at least six miles from West Point. Maybe it doesn't need to go all the way to Manga Hick, but maybe we need to look at what's out there and then make a more informed decision on which exact mile marker. Uh, well, one one uh, one option would be to bring it from West Point north to cover that that business, and it would also cover some uh, give more option for commercial development closer to West Point. Right. Yeah, that, and that that's something we don't have to do at this point. No, we don't. No. So we could show it either way now, and then get the board get the board to make a recommendation to the board and get their. Uh, Response to that, as well as the as well as the citizens' comments. Yeah, I think that works fine. Yeah, and, and I'm fine with whatever the group wants to do. And, and Mr. Greenwood, you're our board representative, so if you have a, a flavor for what you think they would want, I'd welcome your recommendation. But whatever y'all want to do is, is fine with me. I just uh, was caught by surprise when I read, saw it in the ordinance. So. Right. Yeah, I thought we had talked about shrinking it, and then we went back to putting it the whole length since that's what it was. But I'm not—I wasn't sure either. I, I think that's how I remember it as well. Is that we went back to saying the full length. But again, that's something that you know we send this up to you guys. We were under the understanding that it it was the full length, but I mean, you know, whatever you guys want to move forward with. Bonnie, you live right in the middle of that. What do you think? My personal opinion is I don't think it should be the full length, um, but I'm open to whether it's four miles or whatever we think um, would be better suited. Um, but I, I, I personally don't think it should be all of. Okay. Janie? Um. I don't I don't really have a preference one way or the other, frankly. Okay. Um, what do you all say we go ahead and leave it? I think we've got uh, the current ordinance has a limit on four miles or whatever or to a particular location. Why don't we go ahead and leave that that way? if you all are in agreement with that. And then we can see what the citizens have to say during the public comment period and, and the, uh, uh, and the uh, public hearing later. And then we can make our recommendation to the board based on that. Are you all in favor of that? I don't know. That's fine with me. Okay. Steven? That works. Okay. Like I said, I don't, I don't know what's in there. I don't know. If, I don't know. Does somebody have the actual document there? I'm trying to look it up right now and see if I can find it in the original. And while she's looking, and, and for my edification, 
what distance are we talking about? If you're talking about the entire length, do we know what that is? About 30 yeah. miles, I think. Yeah, exactly, yeah. A lot longer than it is wide. It's eight miles wide and probably 30 miles long. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. It, the current reg has it as um, the full length of both, 360 and 30. That's it does have it as the full length. Yeah. So then, um, is your all's preference to put it the full length? Like Mr. Wagner said, leave it that way and make a Yeah. We can always make a recommendation to send it up. Okay, let's go with that, if, 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 unless anybody has an objection. No, I, I was going to raise the question. I have no objection whatsoever. Okay. I agree. I agree. What's that? I agree. Oh, okay, got gotcha. you. You okay with that, Bonnie, for now? Yeah. And Janie? Yep. Okay. Uh, next thing, John, I'll go ahead and hang up unless you want to. We, we have, well, I've, I've had the floor for a while, so I'm almost finished, but I'm happy to go with someone else at this point. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and finish yours out. Uh, All right. Whatever you've got. Uh, uh, and let's, go, let's go to adult entertainment, if you would. Yes, uh, I'm a big fan. So um, I don't think we have any restaurants that stay open past n midnight. Any reason why we would allow these sorts of places to stay open past midnight? I couldn't find the answer to that question, to be honest with you, Mr. Breeden. Okay. Well, I'd like to change it to 12. Um, and I'm a big fan of the First Amendment in general and, and, and these sorts of clubs in particular, but I'm not sure citizens want them in King William County. Having said that, if, if we make them as, as unoffensive as possible while still protecting the First Amendment rights, I think it, we, we'd, we'd, we'd be in good shape. Uh, a number of Virginia localities have some standards of conduct. Quite candidly, these came from another state, but it seemed to, to be well written. Any reason why we can't it require standards of conduct? Because as it is right now, a single club could come in and I don't see that they couldn't do anything they wanted without standards of conduct. Anybody got any comment? Have you all read that? The ladies I did, and I, well, I know that um, localities can limit the areas, which we've done. I think we say it's only permissible in the industrial, if I'm correct or at least we've yes. changed it to propose that, and that you can um, moderate or restrict the time and manner. So I think it's appropriate. Is that correct? And I think we should. Uh, Kelly and Rebecca, do you see any problem with any of the things I've proposed from a legal standpoint? So from since it's from directly from another state, I think we should, I, I, I'm not comfortable um, commenting actually without doing a little more research to make sure, um, primarily because I just wanna make sure that we wouldn't be stepping out of line on anything that the state is already regulating. That, that would be my main concern. Right. And, and so, so I, I defer to you all to to tell us where we were being redundant, where a state could already does not allow something, and then anything we're proposing above and beyond that. Is there any reason we should not be able to? And and do the other commissioners not want to be that strict, or want to be stricter? And this is such a sensitive topic that again, typically on the on the First Amendment issues such as this, you know, we recommend that it's included in your ordinance. And as Janie said, um, regulating the location and per performance standards for um, time and various things like that. But generally, otherwise, would defer to the county attorney on on the actual legal. Um, legality of, of 
more stringent standards. And I would say too, we may be able to, to use it. We'll, we'll just have to see. Um, I would also like to know where it came from, if you could share that. And then in, in particular, because E does also refer to a definition. So I would like to, you know, check that, that ordinance's definition that they are referring to as well. Well, I, I, again, I'm not tied to any performance standards. The lack of them, though, um, can they have totally nude dancing if it's allowed by the state? Can they do X, Y, Z uh, if it's not uh, performance standards? So anything that's not allowed for us to put in, we can take out. I will, I will dig up where I found it. Uh, I may have it fairly easily, but if not, I'll, I'll, I'll make the effort and get it to you by sometime tomorrow. Uh, there were a number of Virginia ones that had a number of different standards, but they were – uh, they were inconsistent from place to place. This one had this and that one had that. And I found this group and it seemed to cover all the areas that I felt should be covered. It kept covered. Uh, uh, pun, pun initially was in, unintentional. Um, but, but anyway, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, so I, if, if, if the county attorney says we can't do something, that's fine. But, but uh, we, we didn't have any performance standards at all. And again, while I wouldn't necessarily want to locate a strip club in, in King William County because we're away from the population center, if, if they allow things in King William that I can't do in Richmond or Norfolk, hey, I can have a really good one here. And once they're here, what do we do? And so I would rather make sure that, that we have as strong a standards as community would want to have. Right. John, that's what I wanted to bring up. I think one of the meetings that you weren't able to come to, uh, Kelly and Rebecca told us that's why we needed to put this legally back in there, even though uh, we had originally said to take it out, because they said if we don't have anything in there, they can right. get away with anything. And this way... I, I, was, I was at that meeting, and oh, okay. which is why I begrudgingly thought it was okay. Okay. All right. I didn't, I didn't remember. Thanks. Anybody else got any comment? Well, I'll weigh in a little bit. I'm, I'm certainly no prude, by not not by any means. <laughs> but uh, and I I do agree with what John's trying to accomplish. But when I look at the uh, language in there, I I really have a problem with having that in the public document, and it um, it almost seems to me that that would uh, encourage uh, certain types of clientele. Uh, it may discourage, as John had said, it may discourage somebody from uh, putting in a, a, a strip club like that with, a, with that kind of requirements. But if, at the same time, if somebody read that, it would certainly encourage them to, uh, to participate. Um, but other than that, if I, I, would, I would agree that probably the county attorney needs to take a look at that and, and give a judgment. And the last thing that I've got to, that I would like to, to cover tonight is in the utility scale solar facilities. And I would want to add in 86-352 number three, utility scale solar facilities exceeding 21 megawatts may be installed. Um, I don't want to have 17 megawatts, and then right next door, a year later, another 17 megawatts for which we get no tax revenue. Um, so I would like to limit the utility scale to more than 21 megawatts. I agree with that. Me too. Me too. Me too. Okay, great. And I've taken enough of everyone's time, and I thank you all very much. Uh, the, anything else is e either editorial or we can see how, how it goes with, with, down the road. So thank you all very much. Okay, thank, thank you. you, John. Thanks, John. Stephen, do you have a comment? No, I just said thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Um, next, Janie had uh, sent out something this afternoon. Uh, in regard to the, what is that? The uh, it's the short-term rentals, and yeah, I'm so sorry rentals. I got it to you all so late. Um, I don't know if you all knew I wasn't supposed to be here tonight, but our spring breaks got canceled, so here I am. 
Um, so in my email, I just um, expressed again my concerns about having an ordinance about the short term rentals. Um, and I had communicated those at a meeting. And I think most of you all were present that I thought they were the way it was drafted was for an urban setting, not a rural setting such as King William County. It seemed to me that the, the feedback I got from my fellow commissioners was that they liked ha having some type of provision about short-term rentals in the ordinance. Um, and so my recommendations in the email, and it's my phone has died now, so I'm gonna have to go to the section. Um, I outlined some of my recommendations to include but not limited to, to eliminate the requirement that the short-term rental has to be the host residence, um, to eliminate the distinction between type A and type B rentals. And if you will, it's on page 113 of the Berkeley revised ordinance, if you've got that in front of you, but I'm just summarizing for you all in bullet points. Um, to eliminate the requirement or the restriction that a host can only have one Airbnb or one short-term rental within the county. Um, and to, again, eliminate the requirement that the uh, rental property be the host's primary residence, which is more like an Airbnb to me. Um, to eliminate the requirement that the name of a principal guest be provided to the county. I have concerns about that for privacy reasons, and I think the host uh, contact informa information should be enough. Um, to just change the age of renters to 18 as opposed to 21, because if the concern is noise and things like that, there are already provisions in here which allow the license to be revoked um, for substantiated claims. Um, and to eliminate the requirement that the maximum number of adult guests in the rental be six. Um, so those were my recommendations. I know you haven't had much time. I, I went through things like the only places that have ordinances like this are, you know, the city of Fairfax, Fairfax, Loudoun, Alexandria, probably Arlington that are that are drafted in a manner similar to this, although they don't require the home to be the host primary residence. So I really couldn't find anything that was as simple as I wanted it to be. So I thought I'd just work with what the language was and I can't remember where that was pulled from and just eliminate the provisions that I thought were just too cumbersome or just unnecessary. So that was it for me. Mr. Adder, um, do we have a do we have an issue with uh, short term rentals in the county now? No, it was a, a long range concern. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that that's an ordinance to take care of future needs, basically. Right, planning ahead. Right. I do agree that with Ms. Rhodes, it's unlikely that it will become a proliferation here. And I think we do have enough mechanisms to control it if it did. What would you all think about just taking that out, leave the definition in, but take the uh, section of the code out? If we, if we get some in and we don't have something and it becomes a nuisance, uh, then, then once again, we're trying to, to play catch up uh, as, as we've been with, with some other facilities that catered to yoga and whatnot. Um, for those of you who've been around for a while, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I would be, I would have no problems at all with incorporating all the changes that Ms. Uh, Ms. Rhodes has. Um, they all look very reasonable. And, and then keeping, the, keeping it in the ordinance. Mm -hmm. What's the consensus of the rest of you? I didn't even see it, so I don't know. What does Kelly and Rebecca think? 
we haven't seen it either. I mean, other than, you know, what she has described, I, I think those are, are fine. Um, you know, certainly you want it to match your community. And so, you know, if you're not as concerned, there's, you know, not a lot there right now, I think starting with something small makes sense. And, you know, if, if, if you all are happy with the language, we certainly can be happy with the language as well. And, um, but, but we haven't seen it right now. And I think also kind of to Janie's point, sometimes this is important for communities that are facing affordable housing problems to regulate and um, limit the amount of Airbnb rentals that might otherwise be taking away viable housing units from the community. It doesn't sound like that's a concern, at least at this point in this stage. And so just start to streamline the regulations and make it simple and easy for people to come in, get a business license and pay their taxes would might be the, the best approach to just fully ease in the regulation if, if um, and just kind of see how it works since this is the first step into that process. Yeah, I would say there are no hotels that I'm aware of, and I think there may be four or five Airbnbs. There is nowhere to stay in this county none um so you know while i understand the county wanting to have a mechanism there i think we can just start out with a simple template that um yeah as a compromise yeah that sounds great yeah okay well would rebecca would you all take a look at that and if if you see no problems with it uh go ahead and incorporate that uh I've, I've read Janie's comments and I agree with them. Uh, if you all see no problem with it, go ahead and incorporate that. Sure, we'll we'll do that. If if Ron or Miss Rhodes could just forward that to us, we'll be happy to take a look and put it in. I think I already did, but I'll do it again if I didn't forward it to y'all earlier today. Yeah, I didn't like receive it earlier. Yeah. You all may have already left where you came from before. You before that came out <laughs> but thank yeah you. it was last minute sorry <laughs> um bonnie do you have anything i do not have anything for tonight okay uh steven no i'm okay um i got a bunch of stuff <laughs> and i'll try and go through it right quickly um I sent a copy of this out to everyone, but I've a couple of things I wanted some clarification from Ron. Now I can't find my comments. I've got your responses in front of me. Yeah, I'm looking for it so I can read it. <laughs> okay, here it is. Um, I guess the first thing was uh, definitions, uh, family subdivisions, and I noted that uh, all lots less than five acres have a reasonable right of way of not less than 20 feet. And my concern there, as I noted in, in my comments, was that a 10 foot right of way, especially when that right of way goes through somebody else's property, is not sufficient for. Uh, moving vans, uh, any kind of construction equipment, and particularly emergency vehicles. So I, I don't see why we couldn't make that 20-foot, uh, uh, no more nor, nor any less than 20 feet. Do you all see anything with that wrong with that, Rebecca? No, that is something that you can do, and that's actually something that, that Kelly and I talked about a little bit. Um, I've seen localities do it both ways. Some localities, um, you know, just are trying to be generous to someone who maybe has a difficult neighbor who doesn't want to give 20 feet. Um, and so they leave that open so that there can be variations in easements. Um, and I've seen other localities who, like you're suggesting, say, you know, 10 feet is just not enough and we're going to require the 20 feet. Yeah. Go There's always a big are you all in agreement with that? Yeah, I like 20 feet. Okay. 
Okay. All right. If we're good with that, I'll go on to the next thing, and that was um, under conditions generally. Um, this had to do with um, the Section 86-6 conditions generally, uh, Item 9, access to a building or land use across land which is not zoned so as to permit use, permit the use served by such access is not permitted. Um, and the comment here, the staff note was, county attorney finds that this provision is acceptable for access roads. Does that mean what what yes. we <laughs> have in there is acceptable? Yes. Okay, so we can move ahead with that. Good. <laughs> That's that's an old ordinance that has served its use in the county. Uh, the next thing I believe you, you've you taken care of, and that was the um, minimum site areas, height areas and, and uh, dimensional regulations, and you corrected that, so that's good. Um, Section standards development buffers, and I, Mr. Edder, I have a problem that not really a problem, but I, we, we use buffers in a lot of places, and it seems like they have different meanings in different er, different places. So uh, I would ask that you all kind of go back through the ordinance, and I noted one place in the. Um, um, Chesapeake Bay Preservation, that uh, they use buffers, and it's a little bit different. Uh, buffers is just a 100-foot strip. Uh, it's not, we're not doing anything to that 100-foot strip. Other places, a buffer is uh, a wall or a fence. So, you know, if, if you all could go back through that and uh, make the language or at least look at the language and see which is best, whether buffers or landscape or screening or which is more appropriate for those different uses so that the uses of those terms are, have the same meaning throughout. Are you all good with that? Yeah, I'll take a look at that, and I'm sure Rebecca and Kelly will too. Okay, good. site plan requirements and, uh, you know, uh, I have an issue with the going with the buildings for site plan requirement. I don't think, I personally don't think that's what was intended. I think, well, this has application in a couple of places, but to take out the word major subdivision, minor subdivision, and uh, so forth, and use a building requirement. I don't think captures what was intended. Um, and I'm, I have a little bit of uh, difference with you all on um, what a subdivision is. And to, you know, to subdivide is an act. A subdivision, <clears throat> a subdivision in the state code is a reg residential development. Um, we don't have we have B1 uses, we have B2 uses, we have industrial uses, but those aren't subdivisions as such as, as intended in the code. Um, so I, in my opinion, those uh, types of things, <coughs> excuse me, trying to substitute a dwelling of uh, whatever, for that use in the site plan is not appropriate. I, I think the site plan, when we keep those same things we had in there, the TCOs, the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Areas and so forth, I think everybody, sh in my opinion, everybody should well understand that when we've got that in there, that means anything in the TCO. It means anything in the um, 
any conditional use. Uh, it means the whole conditional use. It means the whole subdivision, the whole development, uh, and every, any house, any road, any uh, easement or whatever within that. Um, uh, I just have a an issue with changing that from what it was. It, it, in my <clears throat> in my opinion, it stood the test of time over years it, the way it was, and I don't see that making those changes uh, to me doesn't make good sense. And anybody so, else have any comments on it? I would appreciate it. So just to clarify, I pulled up state code definitions. Um, for the subdivision section and the state code definition uh, specifically says unless so so you can define it differently um, in an ordinance adopted pursuant to state code so we would need to look at those requirements but otherwise the definition means a parcel of land uh, the division of a parcel of land into three or more lots or parcels of less than five acres for the purpose of transfer or ownership, transfer of ownership or building development. Um, or if a new street is involved in such subdivision, any division of a parcel of land. So uh, the base definition according to state code is truly related to that act of division of land. Sorry, I didn't look at that at that uh, definition, but I, I was just read through the subdivision or state code subdivision ordinance, mm -hmm. and it when you go through that through the state code on subdivisions, it it uh, entirely refers to to residential subdivisions, and, and it seems to me like that's the total intent of the state subdivision code for or state code for subdivisions. Anyone else have any comment on that? John, no, you've been around. I'm... Go ahead. Go ahead. Is that Janie? Yes, I was just gonna say, I, I do recognize, I, I do think that subdivision refers to the act as a real estate lawyer, um, whether it's commercial, residential, what have you. Um, and I'm not, I haven't looked at the Virginia code, but just generally speaking, um, I look at the definition as being broad pertaining to any classification of property. The, the Virginia code def definition is as that she described it. So uh, we are allowed to modify it beyond that, but she read the definition straight from the code of Virginia. Okay. <laughs> um, and they, the way it's set up in there, it, I haven't got that in front of me right, right now, but um, you, you have given three or four examples or four uses that are covered under the uh, the, the um, site plan requirements or the uh, uses that require. But the way it is is written, and then you've got some things that aren't required. But the way it is written. It doesn't appear to me to be broad enough to cover uh, major developments, to cover uh, all of the land uses, the streets, the drainage easements, uh, utilities, and all of that. Uh, and a site plan uh, would cover uh, property lines, uh, streets, uh, all the amenities in a development, whether it be a subdivision, a commercial development, uh, industrial development, or whatever. So uh, that's that's where I'm having a problem with it. And I, you know, when I read it, I don't see that covered in there anywhere. And 
Ron, maybe you can, again, kind of describe the current process. We did provide some alternative language that would expand the site plan potentially to cover um, other improvements beyond just structures. So, but Ron, I think you had some thoughts on, on that as well, if you want to chime in. Well, I mean, for the most, I'm, you know, it's I'm still a matter of whether uh, site plan requirement reviews. If we've already got everything zoned appropriately, uh, whatever is permitted should go in there without uh, having to go through public hearings and all of that. Um, and I, I'm, to be honest with you, um, I have not gone back and looked at what it said before March 12th, 2020. Um, I didn't have a problem with the TCO district regulations as they stand. I just wanted to change some things as far as um, how we approve uh, the architectural part of it. So I, I didn't help you, did it, Kelly? <laughs> So as I was understanding from the last, and Rebecca, feel free to chime in if I'm talking off um, or not on the right track, but we had consolidated all of the site plan requirements. Is that correct, Rebecca? Yes. Yeah. And so these requirements would apply universally to the TCO and to other districts. And what, what the summary is, is that a site plan would be required for new all new structures except these ex particular exemptions that we had um, listed and i think part of the chairman's concern is that it, it's not by requiring it for structures only we are not we're missing some of the other improvements that could potentially trigger a site plan so that's why that was our interpretation of providing this potential change to the language. So that that would be to, to expand the term structures to say all construction, reconstruction, additions, alterations and changes of use to any property. So that would pick up if you're you're changing the use of a property. Um, except for these certain things and, and we may want to talk through what those exemptions would be, but we continue to, to suggest to go with the exempt, like kind of listing those items that are exempt from the site plan process, rather than trying to articulate all of the potential items that could trigger a site plan. That's absolutely right. This is Janie, because our list of what required site plans, the concern was we might miss something. So rather than say, this is all inclusive and here are the exemptions and then have something fall through the cracks that would otherwise require a site plan, the thought was pretty much everything requires a site plan except the following. And that was the thought process. Exactly, and we, at the last meeting, we said we would come back to you with what those items could be and then we would kind of talk through if you had any changes to those. So right now we've listed the exemptions as individual single family dwellings, individual two family dwellings, um, accessory uses where land disturbance is less than 2,500 square feet, agricultural operations, um, filling and grading less with an impact of less than 2,500 square feet, and then changes of use that don't um, impact any site improvements like no changes to parking. So, I mean, we were kind of keeping this in mind as a rural county that you might want to not require site plans for individual single family dwellings or individual duplex type of dwelling units. But again, we kind of look at look to staff and look to the planning commission too on that. Well, we do require site plans for single family dwellings. Okay, so we want to, we would want to remove those exemptions then. Ron, do you want to look at this a little closer and provide a provide additional feedback? Yeah, I'll I'll take a look because um, uh, and now that way I can talk um, offline with uh, different members of the commission as well. But yeah, I'll take a look at that and we can work that out. 
Is that okay with you, my, Chief, uh, Mr. Wagner? My my uh, my whole objection is when when I look at that, I'm looking at that as as buildings, uh, buildings that are allowed and buildings that are not allowed. There is no discussion except the exemption for 2,500 square feet, but there's nothing in there that says anything greater than 2,500 feet um, is a site plan, is it, is it a land disturbance. It also doesn't, when you, when you look at the what's required in a site plan, you've got everything in there. But What's required in a site plan, if you're looking at a site plan for, uh, I don't have that in front of me right now, but for such and such a type of building, then what about uh, all the amenities that go with that building? What about the, the streets and the, uh, if you've got several buildings in a commercial development, what about all the parking areas, the streets that serve that and, and so forth? Uh, um, doesn't seem to me that we're capturing what we need to be capturing. I'm not sure I'm how we're not capturing the streets. I mean, if they submit uh, construction plans, site plans, that does capture all the utilities and infrastructure. Uh, it, uh, <laughs> I, I guess I'm having a hang up with when you say projects that require you're not there's nothing in there specific about projects it's about individual units and at least that's the way I'm reading it okay yeah but, I'll take uh, well let me um I mean I, I'll, I'll take a look at that Don I'm in and call you and, and I'll have okay. to work through it okay yeah uh, you know I just want to make sure the language is something yeah, that, yeah. Uh, that we can all live with um, as for public hearings, um, I have some hang-up with that, but uh, I, I think I can live with that. Um, we, I can live with it because we have changed the uh, amendments to the ordinance to include site plans. So when we include site plans in, in the rezoning, then... I think my objections are covered there because then we have a, a public hearing to cover that. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Good. Okay. <laughs> um, I think that. All that. What'd you have, Stephen? Nothing. Okay. I think that pretty well exhausts the major things, major issues I had. Uh, so I think we're in pretty good shape. Uh, if you all, uh, Rebecca, would take a look at all the things in there in, that John has sent in and that I've sent in and what Janie sent in and the comments from tonight. Um, look through those and see if there's any other questions or any other issues that we need to, to address or clarify. And then I, I feel like we're in a position to go ahead and move forward with the next phase of, uh, which would be the public, uh, the public involvement phase. Um, has anybody, or are you all in agreement with that? Yeah, we're, we're happy uh, to, take a look at what you've got and, and put everything in, if that's the consensus of the, the commission. Yeah, what, what we have recommended, if, if, you, if you have any issues or objections to it, if you would just uh, uh, let Ron know what, what they are so he can communicate back with us. Um, if, if, if the commission in favor of moving, moving ahead in that direction. John? Uh, I, I'm fine if, if we're all comfortable with what we've agreed to tonight, yes. Janie? 
I am too. Yep. Steven? Yeah, I'm okay with it. Bonnie? Yep, I'm okay. Okay. All right. So, moving ahead to our next phase, which is the public involvement phase. Um, let me look at my notes here. And Rebecca, for your background, I'm, I'm going to be sending you some stuff here shortly. Um, you know, I've got certain operational things I need the ordinance to address, and one of them is increasing the fines. Right now, we're charging $10 a pop, you know. <laughs> uh, but just a reminder, if you don't get that from me, will you harass me to get it? I, I really need that, that language done. Certainly, I'll harass you. No problem, Ron. I appreciate that. <laughs> I have a question. Is there a maximum that's required on the charges required by law? Yes. Yeah, yeah, state code does have, have some limits, and, and we'll make sure it matches the code language as well. So I would do that, say, X amount or such uh, other amount as permitted by state law, and maybe it's a vote of the board. I don't know, but have some flexibility yeah it's it's tough so i'm under consent order by deq to put civil penalties in on the chess bay act um she's taking my word for it that we're going to do that as part of these ordinances so <laughs> i have to remember to do okay. it that's good <laughs> i um looking forward um Ron, we have the work groups again. I want to ask you to give us the planning commission, the work groups that you will be working with uh, on, in the public involvement phase. And um, how are you going to proceed with that under the uh, strict guidelines we have now because of the prior coronavirus? Uh, how are you going to proceed with that? Um, I'm completely changing my yeah. approach. <laughs> Excuse me? I'm completely changing my approach. Um, okay. I, I, I don't, um, under circumstances, there, there's no reason for me to bring a group of people together physically. Um, the whole idea of the work group was because as a county, we have a lot of trouble getting public participation. Yes. So I, the first step, I will take the uh, email list of people that, you know, uh, stakeholders, developers, uh, uh, citizens, farmers, just people I've identified who are very tuned to the community and who care and love to comment, I'm going to reach out to them directly um, for asking them to give me their feedback and spread the word. So we're going to do word of mouth advertising for the uh, revision to the ordinance. We're going to go with uh, a couple of probably survey monkey type deal, but I'm also going to advertise on the King William pages, do the social media, just to try to drum up public participation and have people actually look at what we have spent so much time and effort in preparing. And, um, but the idea of drawing a group, a uh, particular group together at this juncture just doesn't make sense to me. So I'm just gonna do a word of mouth advertising campaign so that we can, I'm, I'm going to just solicit public comment. Um, well, that's, that's, that's yeah. how I'm going to approach it. Yeah, that's uh, any way we can can get that public comment. I'm I'm all for. We, you know, we we are working for the people in the county, and and we've got to to have their involvement to the extent we can get it. I know we've had a very difficult time in the past getting people involved, but uh, any way we can get that public participation. I just want the Planning Commission to not get in the middle of it, but to be informed on what's going on. Well, that's, um, uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do, and it's all going to be um, uh, 
as transparent as I can make it. Basically, I'm begging people to give me their comments because, right. like you pointed out, it's so hard to get people involved. <laughs> I want them involved. Yeah. Um, I was I was pleasantly surprised with um, the solar uh, and energy with with the uh, public participation they had. Uh, you might want to look at that and learn. Maybe we can learn a little something from that. Although we 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 have no way to get people together now, so that's that. Yeah, and that's my problem is I really don't want to bring a, you know encouraging even four people to sit at a table. Yeah. Under, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you can if you can just keep us informed on that. And the next thing that I want to say is that um, after we get all that information. Uh, by by whatever means you're using to get information, what I would like would be uh, a summary of the recommendations from the public, whoever they may be, and that would come back to the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission will review that. Uh, then when we go to a public hearing, uh, that all that information would be a part of the public hearing. And then once we've had that public hearing and have those comments and the comments that you get from all these public meetings or public participation, then we'll incorporate that as a planning commission. We'll look at all of that, and then we'll make the final determination on what we want to recommend to the Board of Supervisors. Sounds good to me. Everybody... um, in agreement with that? Uh, I'm totally in agreement with one exception. When we get all the comments back, if there if there's a lot of uh, contention, I would want us to maybe have a meeting, uh, I would have hoped in person, but we could do it the same way, to go over their input to see what we want to incorporate before we actually have our public hearing, because we may want to tweak it some before the public hearing, depending upon what we get back. Good point. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a good point. I, I would just, if if we've got good, useful comments from from that exercise, then I would want when we go to public hearing, then uh, and and I guess what you're saying is is we would do a little tweaking to so that we don't put every comment out there, but do a little tweaking and get the I guess get the um, the substance of what what the comments are, um, but yeah. the, but I would want to see those as a part of the public hearing process so that the rest of the public sees what what those are as well. I would be totally fine with that as well. However, we've taken into account the following three or five things that we missed is as good as we are. They brought up these three to five things that we were like, oh, my goodness, yes, by all means, we want to change that rather than have it remain uh, something that we don't necessarily agree with anymore based on the comments we got. Yeah. yeah. So, so we, we can include all those comments even to the point of saying we got these comments and we changed it this way to address those comments. Yeah, I, I, I think we could do that, yes. Mm-hmm. I just – you know, I, I don't want to to miss anything, but but by by us taking the time to go through it, uh, I think we can can incorporate all of that. Yeah, that sounds fine to me. Okay. Anybody else got any comments? Stephen. I think Stephen has left us. Uh oh. <laughs> I don't see him. He's not in any of the boxes I have in front of me. He he had probably had a long night last night. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, let's see if I've got anything else here. Um, do you have any any county staff updates, Ron? Yeah, I just uh, real quickly. Um, uh, we'll send out the normal reports to y'all as we get them. But I do want to inform you that we are going to bring a conditional use permit to the Planning Commission for the May regular hearing for a cell tower out on Mount Cahoke. 
Um, okay. I went to the balloon. I also went to the public forum that they held um, with the whole person that was there. Um, but, <laughs> okay. <laughs> But I just wanted to let you all know that's going to be coming your way. Uh, it doesn't seem to be very controversial in any way, shape, or form. Okay, okay. Any, any reason to let that go. Um, um, the fee schedule I've redone, that's going to the board in, uh, at their May meeting. I want to get the new fee schedule out um, just in case anybody applies for anything. Yeah, um, yeah. But other than that, you know, um, we have seen uh, slowdown, but we're open for business. We just don't allow the public in the building. Uh, but we are taking drop-offs, and we're still uh, trying to keep people working. So um, that's well, about how's it. Your staff? How's your staff doing? Uh, well, Sherry's out of the hospital. Hi, Sherry. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's been she's been eavesdropping the whole time. I've been oh, watching. Um, she's the the staff's holding up fine. Um, you know, um, I think I'm almost got everybody healthy, and uh, nobody's bringing in any viruses that I can tell. And mm -hmm. I distributed plenty of. Uh, I've got in case anybody wants any. I got a couple hundred face mask, uh, surgical masks sitting in my office for anyone who needs them. Uh, better Thank make sure you. your staff has. As those, um, they I saw on television how to fashion a, a face mask out of a bandana or a handkerchief, and uh, I used that when I went to the doctor today, and it really worked very well. <laughs> so, there are, are um, I, excuse me, I'm on the phone with Mr. Greenwood. How are you, sir? Okay, well, can y'all hear him at all through? Yes. 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 Okay, well, I've, I've uh, plugged you in um, through this wonderful technology that we have going on. Um, I'll, I'll update you where we were. All the changes that we discussed tonight, we're going to move forward, uh, address them, and start into the public participation part of the program. And I'll be sure to keep the uh, commissioner, uh, the commissioners informed of um, as we go forward to you know, all the steps and all the comments back. And I was just uh, giving a little county update about a cell tower that I'm going to bring to the board's um, this, uh, planning commission for a public hearing in May, and then hopefully the board at the end of May. I hadn't figured out how to do that yet, but because advertising doesn't work, but um, anyway, that's where we are, so you hadn't missed a whole lot. <laughs> okay, if uh, I just wanted to make a couple of comments. Um, I, I want to thank every one of you all, uh, staff and the commission, for all the work you've done to put put into this. It, it's been a, a long process, and I think uh, I think we've We've gotten to pretty much to where we want to be. We still got to go through the public information phase and get the public involved. Uh, but I think uh, what we've come up with so far is is going to be helpful to the county. And I do appreciate all the work from uh, Berkeley Group and staff and and the commissioners as well. Um, I do want to be talking about at the next regular meeting uh, the process of going going ahead with the uh, comp plan, if if the board approves the funds, I don't know where that stands, but uh, if the board approves the funds and we can go ahead with the consultant for that, uh, before we get a consultant involved, I want to uh, want us to have some pretty good understanding of where we're going with that so we can work with the consultant and keep the consultant advise, advised of what our concerns are. Uh, do any of you all have any any comments, uh, Stephen? Are you still with us? Yeah, I'm, I don't have anything. Okay, John. Uh, the only thing I have the 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 public hearing for the cell tower. Are we planning on doing that in person or via this methodology? This will probably be by uh, uh, this methodology. 
Have you have you read the Attorney General's opinion? Uh, I've read several, but which one are you referring to? <laughs> uh, the one uh, dated March 20th uh, by the Honorable Richard C. Sullivan, Jr. I'm sorry, no, it was, I'm sorry, uh, he asked the question and then the Attorney General responded back on, on this. Um, the type of meeting we had tonight, I'm very comfortable with. It was Mark Herring's opinion. The kind of meeting we had tonight, I'm comfortable with, but read that opinion, and, and, and you know, I know that your counsel has already looked at it. Uh, I don't see that we can do it, um, but, uh, but again, I would encourage you to read the opinion if you haven't already. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure if I've read that one you're talking about. Um, I've been going through that uh, because I've got a BZA appeal, and I've got, you know, the consensus is that the Planning Commission moving forward is essential. Um, but I do know if you're referring to the 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 part about where a planning commission is an advisory group. Maybe. Well, even the board of supervisors, the exceptions are made for for meetings related to the disaster, not just public business. Right. Yeah, I'll check on it, John, and I'll make sure that whatever we do holds up because that's been my question to all the attorneys. <laughs> it really has. Is, is it going to hold up? After this is over, somebody will come back. Oh, no, sorry. Wasn't Bingo. Uh, uh, Jeff Shapiro was actually talking about some of the things Northam's doing that he's doing, but is it legal or not? The Supreme Court just weighed in on, on, what, uh, uh, on what Wisconsin was doing regarding the primary and basically said, you're wrong. So something to keep in mind. Thank you. And, again, this sort of thing, this sort of public hearing, we could space people out enough that they could, they could be 20 feet away from each other, except for us when we'd be six feet away from each other. So this yeah. will be keep in mind for any kind of public hearings. If you want to talk late off, you know, outside this meeting. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I just, just wanted to mention it. A bunch of localities doing some very unique ways to have the public in their building. Great. Thank you for bringing that up, John. Uh, I think that's helpful. Uh, Janie, do you have anything? Hello. <laughs> no, good good meeting. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Bonnie? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted good. to say. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all for indulging in the long uh, meeting, but uh, I think it was very helpful and worthwhile. And do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Ron, would you poll? Oh, do it in order. Ms. Jeannie Rhodes? Aye. Mr. John Breeden? Aye. Mr. Stephen Greenwood? Aye. Ms. Bonnie Hyde? Aye. And Chairman Don Wagner? Hi, and thank you all, and you all be safe. And thank you all. <laughs> You'll have a great evening. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sherry. Thank you, Rebecca. Thanks, Kelly. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm.